This video is about how I came from these sketches to this final design. At a glance, creating a website looks like it's easy. But do you ever wonder what happens behind the scenes? And what are the steps involved behind the pretty mockups you see on Behance and Dribble? On this video, I'll walk you through my design process on how I created a website for a real client from start to finish. To start up the project, I do some research and exploration. This phase is where I would gather all the relevant information and insight that would help me with the project. And here are some of the questions that I have to answer during this phase. First, what is the background of the company? This includes their goals for starting the project and general information about them. Who are the target audience? This is to know who are we designing for? Who are their competitors? I look into at least three competitors in the space, list out their pros and cons, take note of their visual design and language to see what I could integrate into my project and how can I differentiate the company. So after gaining insight from the client and also my own research work, I used the notes and information I gathered to translate those insights into visuals through a mood board. The mood boarding phase is where all the information I gathered starts to shape the visuals of the project. To put it simply, this is my visual collage of inspiration. Taking notes from my competitive analysis, I look for websites that are similar in terms of the style I'm going for. I would look for similar color patterns, images, and fonts. Then also going back to the client's vision, I include words that would tie in with the aesthetic of the project. And to have more inspiration, I also gather reference photos from Behance and Pinterest. The goal here is to define the overall look and feel of the project, and once I have a clear direction on this, I proceed to the visual designs. Considering that the business is still in its early stages, they don't have an established style or brand. So the client also wanted a logo that would best represent their identity. And referencing the look and feel that I have on the mood board, I started to sketch some logos. My main focus was to creatively blend the business name with the symbolic representation of a house. With clean lines and a structural vibe in mind, I sketched the letter F to form the half side of the house to lean into the structural nature of the company. For the font, I chose Gotham, a bold sans serif typeface, to maintain the clean and modern style that reflects the company's identity. We also experimented with various colors, and we settled on the timeless black and white palette with a touch of a warm gray into the mix for a warm and homey vibe. Now that we have a more established brand and aesthetic through the logo, we can start designing the website. For this project, I'm creating multiple pages, so having a sitemap will help me get an overview of the pages I need. A sitemap portrays the entire structure of the website. You could picture this like your home. As a foundation, I always start with the homepage, similar to a main living space. From there, we explore the rooms inside the house. In our sitemap, this will be the About and Services section. And for each of these rooms, there will be things you will find when you enter them. Going back to the website, the service page would include more detailed pages about each of the services offered by the company. Having this hierarchy and structure will help create content and once I start designing the actual pages. Once I find enough inspiration for the pages I'm designing, I like sketching my wireframes on paper so I don't have to feel like I have to make it perfect right away. These sketches show the layout and the elements that will exist on the page. I use simple shapes like rectangles for images and buttons, 
and lines for text. My main goal here is to capture the basic structure of the pages. Once initial sketches are complete, I transition to Figma for the digital layout. I don't see this part as a linear process because I find myself going back and forth between sketching and working digitally because the designs continue to evolve. Sometimes what looks good on paper doesn't translate well on the screen. When I get the sense that I already have a direction on the layout of the pages, this is a great time to start building my design system. So I grab colors from my mood board and logo, create components like buttons or cards, and I use a type scale to get a baseline of my font sizes, but I customize them depending on the layout and the font I'm using. Having these systems in mind help me speed up my design process when I'm creating high fidelity wireframes. Now that we got the basic structure of the page, it's time to make the designs as close as possible to the final product. This space is where I unleash all the inspiration I gathered for my mood board and the inspiration of layouts I have for my wireframes. You hold a smile, I'll hold your hand. Take this love around the world. When it comes to laying out the design of the page, my goal is to make the images of full view renovations the highlight. I started this on their header where I put a carousel of their work. I'm designing their website as their online portfolio that would give the users an idea of the services they're offering. And now that I have a clear vision to work on the rest of the pages, I can sit back and enjoy the process. After a few hours of messing with the layout, these are the final designs of the website. 